Wang Yuju grew up and fell in love with a man named Shu. They got married and had a baby girl. The baby's name was Jing, and she was a happy, big-faced little girl who liked to help her mom. Wang Yuju and Shu knew that they were only allowed to have one baby because of China's one-child rule. They didn't mean to have another baby, but it just happened one day. She knew she couldn't keep her second baby, which was me, and she didn't like the rule. When I was born, she tied a little string around my wrist that said October 1st, 1992, and gave me a special name. She calls me Yu Ju, which means Jade Chrysanthemum. Have one child for a reason. I don't know the reason though. I think it's because、uh, there's too many people over there, and they want to get rid of some of the people, so they don't have. Because they don't. Ha- I don't think they have that much food, and they're sort of poor, so they just one child policy. I was born in Yangzhou City, and um. My mom had to give me up because she had a child, and we only had allowed to have、um, one child allowed. In my life, I've had two mothers so far. My first mother gave me up because I think she already had a child, and now I have another mother taking care of me now. And then, like when I was three, I asked my mom where I came from, and she's like, "I came from an orphanage." Then I was like, "I thought she was lying to me." I remember my mom telling me I was adopted, but I never. I it's only around when I was six years old when I um. And I rem- then、um, realized I was actually adopted. My mom said that she thinks she left me on a railway. If I could talk to them, I would ask them how it feels to be Chinese or like a real Chinese person, and、um, if I had an, a brother or a sister and what their name were. If I met my mom, I would ask her a question, and the question would be, "What would you want me to be when I grow up?" I'll get that. Hold on, Sam Singleton speaking. Hold on a sec. Mom, somebody wants Zachary here. Hi. Unlike. You know, our sons, our girls, our daughters—they've got layers to try and sort out. They're already awake. Which one do you want?、Uh, They have us to sort、Peaches. out. They have the orphanage to sort out. They have their biological family of origin to sort out. Okay, yes, Pete. I think you've got to develop in them some awareness, some appreciation, and some. Pride in where they came from. Daddy, can you tell me my story about how you got me? Well, we drove up to the orphanage, and we went through up to, down through the gates and into the buildings. And then all of a sudden, some women came through the doorway, and they each had a baby in their arms. But、and、do you get to pick the babies? No, they were they, they already knew. <laughs> there was somebody there that says this little girl goes to that lady. So、you know, I've told I've told her that story I don't know how many times, but she still wants to hear it. I think number one, there's an interest in hearing it over again. 
I think there may be a little checky out that I'm not going to change the details <laughs> <laughs> because to make sure it's the real true bill. Yeah. But in some ways, Just there's, it's always there. All we could see is your tiny little face because you're, you're so cold, you're all bundled up. And mommy looked at your face and she started to cry. And then mommy said, okay, we got to check it's a girl. We got to check it's a girl because mommy wanted to make sure that you were really a girl. What if I was a boy? Would you take me back and get a girl? No, I think we would have kept you, but we would have probably gone and back and say, hey, we still, need a, we still need a girl. But you were a girl and you were beautiful. Sammy, what do you think? Do you want to hear a little bit about your story? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had Emma and we had all the paperwork done and we decided we wanted daughter number two. At the orphanage, the nurses gave me a very warm bath and shaved my head. They left my bracelet on. I had my own crib until another baby arrived. She was a real big crybaby, and we used to touch toes and giggle. The nurse ladies thought I was beautiful and held me a lot. Sometimes when people write songs, they take words out and change words a little bit so it will fit better. It should have the Sabbath très bien. That's, I'm gr gladly glad you noticed that. Great. But you can highlight or color it. Anyway. Having adopted kids, Sabbath adopted Sabbath. girls, is, 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 is a unique issue in itself. Having them from another country, another culture, is a whole is a, an extra layer on it. It's easy to, for them to fit into, into Canadian society. They just go to the local school up there and boom, you know, they're in like a dirty shirt. The energy is to somehow have them understand their, their Chinese roots, you know, the China that's in the bones. Who's Greg? Oh, Greg McDougal. Yeah, he's in my class, eh? Yeah, I know he's in my class too, Sammer. Yeah, I know. Probably we've gone a bit overboard in terms of trying to make them in some way comfortable with their Chinese heritage and make them aware of their Chinese heritage. So we have, you know, we have sought out ways to, f to build that into their, into their, their childhood. Excuse me. Land up. <laughs> you can do all the things that we've done, but it's still, there's still a certain abstraction to what China is. And that's one of the reasons why we're going to go back to China now. The trip to China is to somehow make it real and not just a storybook, not just a natural National Geographic picture or a big bird goes to China on a videotape. You know, this is, they're walking on that soil. They look around and say, yeah, so this is China. Okay, I was just saying that Lou is not going to be here for speeches and she wrote a really nice poem in her literature response. Would you read your poem to the class? Okay. Moving day. I'm going to be moving away, but I won't be moving today. I know you will want me to stay, but I really have to go away. You know I will be missing you, and of course I will remember you. I will, oh, I will have to say my name is Lou because in Alberta I will be now. <laughs> oh, Lou, you know that makes me so sad. That poem. You're doing a really good job of staying happy. I know you're sad to go. Well, moving over into Alberta wasn't so hard. I thought it, I would have a hard time making friends, but it turned out that I didn't. Start off with Lou, you'll do yours. Sometimes um, my teacher explains it that I'm adopted, but no one actually asks me why I was. Only these two boys, and they said, 
why were you adopted? And I'm just like, well, I don't know why. Oh, well, I don't really know. So, I just told them the whole story. I told them that my real mom in China couldn't keep me. And I was in an orphanage for I don't know how how long. And my mom now came and saw the picture, and we we just became a family. And that's how it went. So that's what I said to the guys, and they're still teasing me, but. <laughs> Tell me something happy before I go to sleep. Est-ce que tu la connais, celle-là? Mm-hmm. Oui? OK. I think for Lou, if she look later on in life where she come from, uh, where are her roots, it's very difficult because she's Chinese, but really she's Canadian. And she's Canadian, but she's French-Canadian with the Chinese passport. Mm-hmm. Oh, you back? Bonne nuit, ma chouette. Je t'envoie demain. Oui. Ever since Lou, like anything that happens in China has been a big interest for me. Like, if I can do a project and that can involve China, I do it. E R S S L U L I O C B A J I O S H I R T. Like, I, I find it amazing all, all the things that one country did. And then with Lou, it's even more reason to figure out like why she came about and how it happened. Mm. Xiaoyang, that's where you're from. What would your sister say if I said, are you Chinese? What would she say? She would maybe say, um, I'm, I'm sort of partly Chinese because I have a um, sister that is Chinese. Lou needs to have a hug. She needs to know that people want her and need her, and she needs to need people. So we were the two extremes. She's gotten me a lot more emotional, but I've made her less emotional, so we've, we're trying to balance each other out. Everyone says that I was finally able to let people touch me ever since Lou was around. I know as she gets older, Lou will learn more about... Uh, her past about the Chinese, you know, the rules, uh, one child per family. And uh, she know that, I don't think she really know that it, she was abandoned, you know, it's a very strong word. She know that her mother gave her away. If I wrote Chinese, I'd like to write to my mom about how I feel about her and how I feel after being adopted. And how n- how nice my parents are right now. I tell her my goals in life. Like I really want to go to the um to the Olympics and downhill skiing. That's one of my big goals in life. <laughs> I'm a ski coach and Lou's a ski racer. And last year, uh, it was Lou's first year of racing and she was on my team, so I was her coach. <laughs> so uh, what we're doing this year is we're having dry land training. It's, it's just to get the kids back into shape before the ski season. Après la nuit, ils font le tour de la cour. Bon dodo, mon ami. Fait It was one of our, our first trip in BC. We went to see the Buddhist temple in Richmond. 
the minute we arrived to that temple, they had mantra music, and the music was so soothing that we spent hours on that at that place. Mon ami. Bonne nuit, mon lapin. Mm. Un jour, un jour, né, un né. Mm. Mm. Je t'aime. Tu veux mettre la musique avant que tu te couches? Oui. Here? Ok? À côté? Oui. Lou just, uh, she just loved that mantra that she started to asking it for bedtime story after a bedtime story that to put that mantra on. I don't know if we can say we're very religious people, but we know we have a connection. We have a connection between the two culture. And uh, maybe that mantra connect us, you know, to um, maybe her mom from China and her mom from Canada. And uh, she, she, she liked that mantra, and we just keep playing that before going to bed. Basically, I'm going to go to China for three months. Uh, my intention is to co-principal a school, and I'm going to work with their English department and teach the teachers, and the kids are going to go to school part-time. I don't know what to do. So you uh, got the whole box here, have you now? Yeah. Now let's put it out. Just lie on the floor. Now, right here. That's yours. You can take a certain number. What was the number that we Six. all agreed on? Six. Is that when we were talking about packing our suitcases to go to China, Samia was saying to me just as she went to bed, how many Beanie Babies can I pack, Mom? And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I don't want to take any more Beanie Babies because we might have an army of Beanie Babies in that bag already. So I said, well, who did you want me to check it out with? And she said, the government. And I went, Oh, and what was I supposed to ask? And she said, you're supposed to ask how many Beanie Babies I'm allowed to bring, because if they have a one-child policy, do they have a one baby, Beanie Baby policy? And I thought, okay, I missed it. We're going to bring trumpets. Yours is over there, so you can put She's internalizing in. that whole policy. Okay, and, you know, and I just said to her, as many as we can fit that's reasonable. We don't have a policy. They don't have a rule for you. Five. I think we're probably going to go to the orphanage or in trying to find my nanny and meet her and talk to her. I do have some questions to ask her, like who gave me the name Pepe, if she was, because I don't know who gave me the name. And if I stole any food from her, if I, I was, or if I slept at her house or something like that, or just in the orphanage and they gave me food. Okay. But, Mommy, yeah, no. can I go? Emma's preparing go for this. She wants to meet her mom. I know that. I catch her when she's up in the bathroom and she's pulled her hair up in her head and put it in a claw and she's going like this. Because I've always said to them, if they want to see what their mom looks like, just go look at themselves. Okay. So but she's hoping that somehow she titivates herself up a little bit, makes her pretty. She can see what her mom looks like. Yes, she made it. Six is the total.
first day of school it was different. I saw everybody wearing a scarf and a uniform, and I was thinking I might have to, but then, like, later, I finally knew that I had to wear a scarf because the little grade ones finally gets to know how to tie it, their scarf now, so they're um, a part of the group, and so that's when we got our scarves. I would say within about the first week they had started to begin to dress and do their hair like Chinese little girls do. It was kind of a, a gradual transition, but it started early. And as soon as I got them in school, it became more apparent. On the way in, just the interest in the tactile, concrete things, you know, is that the river where my mother might have washed my clothes? Is that the house that she might have lived in? When we got into the orphanage, they just let us play with the children, which is all I'd ever asked for. And to me, that was the most that I could ever hope for my kids. They had arranged that the nurse for Emma was available, and she just stayed with Emma the whole time, Mrs. Zhao, and I remember her passing this baby to me. I got to see who held me in my arms. She's really nice, and she speaks good English, and she said to me how old I was, and I said I was nine years old in Chinese, which would be um, Joe Sui. lovely footage of when I go into the room and I see all the newfound babies and Emma was more interested in that room than anything because that's the age she was when I got her. The doctor, Dr. Wu, uh, she remembered Sammy because Sammy had had damaged hair when she left because of malnutrition, and she stayed with Sammy. Dr. Wu, um, she remembered me, like, she looked at the pictures when I was little from the pictures from he over here, and so she saw my hair, and it was, like, thick, and she remembered it by thickness when she looked at my hair again. I finally found out, like, who took care of me, and that's, like, sort of the goal that I really wanted to do because I, I never knew who was looking after me and I don't think my mom did either. Sammy tends to be sensitive and after the visits to the orphanage, Sammy mentioned to Paul that she, she felt sad that maybe they all wouldn't get adopted. I was thinking that I really, really wanted to adopt them because I think I will do really good responsibility over them um, and uh, just loving it and stuff like that. I want to go back there to see all their happy, all their happy faces smiling at their orphanage foster people that were taking care of them. Emma, she was asking me all these questions on the way to the orphanage, and while we were at the orphanage. I said, do you want me to write a story for you? If you, if you tell it to me, I'll write it. And she said, yes. I made up, like, names for my grandma and my mother and myself. She was able to create a parent for herself, a mother for herself, a grandpa, grandmother. A, she created a whole story. This is a story about my mother. Once there was a late um, day when my grandmother had just finished having her feet bound by a lady in her village. I think Emma came for her more to terms with the fact that she's been abandoned and that there's a world out there that uh, would prefer boys to girls. Uh, I think she came more to terms with it, but she's still pretty cross about it underneath. I know that's there in her, because uh, she notices. There's little um, Chinese bound feet shoes. They'll remind me about China when I go back, if I do. I think I got them because I think probably my great grandma would have had found feet, so it would might have like reminded me about her, even though I didn't even know her. But I, I just like to know that I had a great grandma.
For Sammy, I just wanted her to see that Chinese people could be her friends, that she's welcome to go home. I think they've, they've uh, come to grips with the China that is, isn't the one in the books that I'd shown them up until eight years old. But whether they'll ever get through the issue of the abandonment is anybody's guess. One day at the orphanage, the nurses began to dress me up in a lot of special clothes. It was so cold that I had seven sets of clothes and I looked like a big fat peach. Something was going to happen. I was extra clean. Then they put me in a blue baby bag with polka dots and I was picked up and taken out of my crib to a lady.